Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Over the past week since the release of Create.5, I spent almost all of my time playing with the brand new trains. In today's video, we will be taking a look at all the different features in depth so that way you can build the ultimate Create Train system. So we're going to kick this tutorial off with taking a look at how to craft all the different items you need to build your train systems. So there's a few new items that are associated with trains. The train tracks, the train casing, the train schedule, the train station, the train signal, the train observer, the train controls, the train door, and finally the train trap door. So the easiest two crafts are going to be the train door and the train trap door. They're both just crafted with any kind of a trap door or door and a single brass sheet. So this is a very cheap and easy recipe, and we also have the option of mixing it with automated shapeless crafting, so you can take our door, our brass sheet, and get our train door fully automatically if you wanted to. So next we're going to take a look at how to make the train tracks. So the train tracks are either made with a stone slab, an andesite slab, or a smooth stone slab. You deploy either two iron or two zinc onto it, and then finally you press it and get your train track. So what that'll look like is if I come over here to this little machine, I have two deployers hooked up that have iron nuggets above, which gets filtered down into it. So if I grab the stone slab, the smooth stone slab, or the andesite slab, throw it here, it'll get deployed once, deployed twice, and then finally pressed, and we have our train track, which we can now place and basically build our whole train network. Now if we wanted to automate this a little more, what we can do is we can have our deployer is hooked up automatically on a belt. We can have a chest here for all of our slabs. And then if I go ahead and give this some nuggets, I can throw all of our slabs in here. And you can see they will automatically get deployed and put together. Then once this runs, we will get all of our train tracks. The next thing we're going to have to take a look at is how to make the train casing. So once you make a train casing, you can craft the train schedule, the train station, the train signal, the train observer, and the train controls really easily just with a few items in a crafting grid. But the casing is going to require something new, which is the sturdy sheet. So the sturdy sheet is made from taking powdered obsidian, pouring lava onto it, and then pressing twice to get our sheet. So to automate this is actually quite simple. All you have to do is put obsidian through crushing wheels to crush it into powdered obsidian run lava on it press it twice and then into a final chest so if i go ahead and activate this funnel you'll see our obsidian will go down into the crushing wheels our powdered obsidian will go here you see it gets spouted pressed once pressed twice and then we get our sturdy sheets so you do have to make sure they have a filter on here because any obsidian that comes through needs to be filtered away because if i look at the recipe for powdered obsidian you see we have a 75 percent chance to get our obsidian back now the filter isn't necessarily required you can see i just broke it here and when obsidian comes through it basically will flow on through ignoring everything and go into the chest at the end so you can either sort it at the end or just pull it out right as soon as it's crushed now once you have your sturdy sheets there's actually two different ways you can make the train casings the first is if you just right click on a brass casing, you get your train casing. The other option is if we wanted to automate this, we could pump them into a deployer and the deployer will press it onto the brass casing and get our train casing. So next we're going to take a look at how to actually place down the tracks. So to place tracks down, all you got to do is just right click on a block and it'll place down a track. Now what's actually really cool is you don't need it to have floor space. It can not only clip into blocks, but you could also just place it on the side of blocks. So if I wanted to place it there, I could easily do that and run my rail. Now the one thing that you do want to be careful of is if I have blocks going through it, the train will stop on this block and won't be able to go forward. So you do have to make sure that your track is clear. Tracks can be placed either traveling vertically, traveling horizontally, traveling at all four of the angles, or you could even place tracks on a slope to get a perfect 45 degree slope going up a hill. And that's just simply done by right clicking wherever you have a one block raise in the floor. And then whenever that ends, it will end and the train would be able to traverse up this little slope. The other way to place tracks is to right click a track that's already placed down and you will get this little hologram of where you can place tracks. So you'll see that we get kind of a bar showing where the rails are going to lay. We also get a little red and green hologram on the floor that shows us how it can be placed. Tracks can be placed straight, either going straight or even at an angle. Tracks can also be placed in S-Bend. So if I go over here to where it's green, I can go over to the side to get a little S-Bend. 
and trays can be placed at both 45 degree turns and even 90 degree turns. And the way to control where it's turning is you just want to face in a direction that you want the train to face. So you see if I face 90 degrees to where I place that first track, it'll place that 90 degrees. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're placing tracks, if I were to go ahead and do a 90 degree curve, what you'll see is we'll get these straight sections. So it'll automatically place like a set curve size, then after that it's just going to do straight edges to hit that curve. But if I hold control, what'll happen is it'll make the smoothest path from point A to point B. So this works on curves, you can say I can hold control to make that smoother. It also works on S-bends, and it even will work on a slope. Now when you're placing tracks in survival mode, you'll note that you'll get this little marker here that tells you how many tracks you're placing. So as I go out here, you'll see that that number will count up. So I just placed 22 tracks, it'll automatically place it and take them out of my inventory. Now if I were to go ahead and go over our limit, so if I go here, place another 20, now we only have 19 left. When I come over here to place the last 19, we'll say not enough tracks. So you'll see our hologram is actually cut short because this actually shows us where we can place our tracks when we only have 18. So I can place them here, but I can't place them here. But what's really cool about this system is it'll actually tell us how many we need. So you can see if I come here, we only have 18, but it says I need 22. So I know if I go craft four more tracks, I can come out to the spot that I want to go. Otherwise, that's going to be as far as I'm able to go. So there's a lot of really cool things we can do with our tracks. So this is the longest piece of track you can place, which is 27 blocks. This is the shortest S-bend and the longest S-bend. This is the smallest size of a curve. So to place the smallest curve, you're going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks, and then forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. So it's basically like an eight block curve to get the smallest curve. And then when we're not holding control, you can see that it's automatically always going to generate that eight block curve. We can also go out to go on diagonals and even do S bends on diagonals and even do 90 degree turns on diagonals. So everything you can do at a regular angle, you can also do at the diagonals. And then finally, here would be the largest turn you can make while holding control to get the smoothest rail. So there's a whole lot of ways you can place tracks flat on the ground. The other thing we can do is build junctions. So what junctions are used for is if we have a train coming down this line and we want to either go straight or turn to the side for either a station or to turn down another path, we basically place a junction. To place a junction, all you got to do is right click on a piece of track that's already placed, bring out your track to the side, and then once that's done, it will automatically generate a junction. So now when a train's coming through here, if we're driving manually, we can either hold right to go to the right side or just keep on going straight. Or if we're driving a train with a schedule, it'll pick which line it needs to go to to have the shortest commute. Now most of these are pretty straightforward, so we can do a little turn off and then back on. We can also do a turn off and on if we have a double track, so if we have a train running one way on one track, another way on another track, we can have it so that either way it's going, it can travel up and along this path and have that kind of turn. We can also do some funky stuff like this, so like if we have a train coming through here that wants to go to either one of these four paths, we can just simply connect it up like this so it can go left, right, or straight. And what you'll notice here is if you have a track going straight over itself, it'll create this little block. So if you have two tracks kind of intersection at a perfect 90 degree angle, it'll create this little block in the middle. And then one of the cooler things we can do is we could actually build a roundabout. So that way if a train's coming through here and it wants to do a full turnaround or get off at any of these stops, we can easily build this. Now there is a pretty cool trick to building roundabouts. To build roundabouts, what you want to do is you want to actually place tracks at a diagonal. Now the reason you want to do this is because when you connect your trains up, you want them to be able to very quickly go through the center of a station without having to go through the whole roundabout. So if I go ahead and place these four tracks at a diagonal like this, what I can do is I can have my tracks coming through here, like so, and then I can connect this up to here, and then connect this going all the way around. connect our second track going up here to the diagonal. And then once we have that done, we'll take our track back out and our track back in. And then we can do that to all four sides and that'll make it perfect. So that way if a train's coming over here and wants to turn right, it can easily turn right. Or if it wants to go straight, it would go into the roundabout and then out straight. So with all that cool stuff we can do on the floor, trains also have a really cool way to generate up slopes automatically. Now to go up a slope, all you gotta do is right click on a piece of track that already exists 
and place down your track at the top of a slope and it will generate the slope. And you see we get that same hologram that tells us where we can and can't put our track. You can also have a piece of track at the top of your slope and the bottom. So I can just right click this, right click this other track and it will automatically generate. We can also place tracks around curves and on slopes. So if I go ahead, grab this, go up the curve, you'll see that will generate. And we can even hold control on this to smooth out our slope and have a really nice gradual incline up our hill. The other really cool thing we could do is if we've placed tracks directly on a diagonal like this, we can connect those up directly to the floor. Now, sadly, one thing we cannot do is place S-bend slopes. So you can see if I come up here, it'll say cannot create S-bend slopes. Slopes have to either be on a curve or completely straight to function correctly. Now, when you're placing a track up a slope, there's one other really cool thing you can do, and that's to hold a block you wanna place in your offhand. So if I hold waxed oxidized copper in my offhand, then I go ahead and place our slope going through here, you'll see it will automatically generate that floor on our train. Plus, we can also do this with slabs. So if you want to get this to look a little smoother, we can grab this, come out here to the same spot, and you'll see it will generate slabs under there instead. So it generates a really nice smooth curve. Along with this, we can also do this on curves. So if I were to come down here and we had a curve track going up there, when I place that, you'll see it will generate all the slabs underneath it, giving us a really nice way to easily decorate our trains. This is also a really cool way to automatically generate bridges. So if I had a few bridges going through here, you can see that it automatically generates the blocks underneath the bridges, making it really easy to build your train bridges. And now all we have to do is decorate this or even just leave it as is and it'll function correctly. Now you don't actually need the blocks underneath for a train to run. Rails can be fully suspended and will run correctly. However, you can't actually stand on the side pieces of rails. You can stand directly in the middle, but as soon as you go off to the side, you will fall. Also, if you have a curved rail, you cannot stand on it at all. So if you can see, even if I'm right in the center of this rail, I'm going to fall right through because it's a curved piece. The other thing we can do is if we hold the new metal girder in our offhand and go ahead and place down a slope, it'll generate that slope with the metal girder beneath it, which I think just looks amazing. And it'll actually match the curve up perfectly. So if we were to bring this all the way out here, hold control to make it really smooth. You can see that that girder generates perfectly on that curve. And we can just kind of grab more girders and bring up and like build our train supports. And I think it looks amazing. This has got to be one of my favorite features with trains because um, it just makes decorating them and setting up all your bridges so much easier and look really, really cool. And then of course this does work on bridges. However, when you're placing a bridge with girders, what it'll actually do is generate the block. So instead of just kind of generating the curve itself, it'll actually generate the block. Plus, if we're in survival, it'll actually tell us how many tracks and how many girders we need. So you can see we need 40 girders and 19 tracks to place this part here. So if I go ahead and give myself that. So if I have a stack of girders and a whole stack of tracks, I can go ahead and connect that and it will generate our girders as we want them. And that looks just amazing. And now my absolute favorite feature of the tracks is that they can actually go through nether portals. So I built a nether portal right here. You don't need to go extra big with it. This could actually be like a standard size nether portal. And even though this is three wide, it'll still work going through the portal and we can connect it up. Now, if you don't have a portal generated on the other side yet, you'll get that message. Cannot place portal track, target portal not generated yet. So I will go through this portal. We will generate one on the other side. And I'll just go ahead and show it to you at the base size so you can see that the train does in fact connect. Now when I place this track here, it will connect up. We get this little purple shader effect which looks amazing. And now when we actually go through here, we'll see our track is generated on the other side which we can then take and continue on our rail. So we could just kind of come up here and then build over here and kind of have a rail going through the nether which is amazing it's going to make generating lava super cool and is a super amazing feature that i was not expecting but i'm so glad to have now with all those different ways to place tracks manually you can also place them with deployers so you go ahead and activate this deployer you'll see it will place a track and what that means is we can place tracks with movement so if we have a train here we could activate this and it will automatically place a line of tracks now this isn't too cool on its own. It's pretty cool, don't get me wrong. Where that really comes in helpful is if I were to go ahead and make myself a train with some deployers on the front here that have tracks in them. I go ahead and go into the controller seat 
and I drive forward, you'll see it will actually place tracks automatically. So this means we could build mining machines, it means we could do all kinds of really cool things with this system. Now with that movement, it's always going to be based on the direction of movement. So if I go ahead and activate it a bearing, you'll see it'll place it at straight diagonals as it goes around the curve. Now this isn't too helpful, I don't know why you'd ever hook up a bearing to track placers, but what you could do is if you had this on a diagonal rail, which actually we could go ahead and test right now. So if I were to put this in a diagonal, and then we hop back in here to control it, what it'll do is it'll actually place rails on that diagonal and we can continue going on that diagonal, which is super, super cool. So now we know how to successfully place our tracks, we're gonna take a look at how to build our first train. So the things you need to build a train are a train station, a train casing, a train control, a super glue, and a seat. Now the seat isn't required, but it's definitely something you're gonna want to have. So the first thing you need to do is craft a train station and right click it on a track. You'll see a little arrow that'll show you the direction that train is going in. Now you can actually do this on a curve, so if we had a curve, we could also place it there. However, that makes building the train a little funky, um, so I would definitely recommend building it on a straightaway. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the section I want and then place down the station somewhere nearby the train, so I'm going to place it right here. Now it'll say successfully bound to track. So now that this is successfully bound to track, what we're going to do is go ahead and click create new train. So they'll get this little pop-up that tells you what you need to create your train. So it says no bogies. Use train casing highlighted tracks to create bogey. So what it means by that is we need to right click a train casing on this highlighted track, which is this blue little powder on the track. Once we do that, we have our bogey placed. So the next thing we need to do is place some blocks on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just place a block on the front and back. You'll see that we automatically glue stuff to the front and back of this bogey. And now that we do that, we can place our train controls and a seat anywhere on the train. Once those are placed, I'm going to go ahead and super glue this whole thing together. Now I can right click on here and click assemble train. Now if we were missing one of these parts, so let's say we forgot our train controls, when I click assemble train, it'll say assembly failed, at least one forward facing controls block is needed to be mounted. So we're going to go ahead and resolve that by placing down our train controls, clicking assemble train, and we now have our train created. Now once our train is created, we will get a little area to name our train. So we can name this train whatever we want. So we can name our train, plus we can also name the track station. So now that we have the station named, we can basically automatically assign stuff to go to the station. So we're going to go ahead and click the check mark here, and we have our train created. Now we can get in here, right click on the controls, and drive our train around. Now what I mean by saying you don't need a seat is I could just right click these controls and control it, and you'll see I'll stay on. However, if this is a little buggy, especially once you start going fast, and especially once you start going around turns, it's very easy to fall off the train. Now once your train is placed, what you can actually do is right click it with a wrench and select a spot on your track. Now this is going to place forward whichever way you're facing, so if I face this way, it'll remain in the same spot, but if I face the other way, it will turn around. And now this doesn't even have to be on the same track, we could like, for example, run over here to this track and place our train down over here. So it's a very easy, convenient way to relocate your train to wherever it's needed. Now if we wanted to go ahead and modify this train, what we have to do is do it at a station. This doesn't have to be the same station it was built, it just has to be any station. So what we'll see is if we're in the train, we can hold space to approach station 1. I will hold space to approach station 1. Once we're here, you'll see this little red flag will pop up, that's how we know that our train is at the station. Plus if we right click it, we'll see the name of our train at that station. Now what I can do is I can click disassemble train, and once that's done, I can continue building. Now to continue building, there's a few different things we can do. First thing is we can place more of these bogies. Now these bogies can be placed anywhere where we see the blue highlighted bit. So I can place a bogey all the way back here, and it will still connect up to the rest of the train. There's a maximum of 20 bogies per train by default, however you can change that if you want. And the other thing to note is that you can only connect two bogies together. So if I were to try to connect three of these together, like so, when I right click here and I click assemble train, it'll say assembly failed, too many bogies attached, three. Now there is an actually pretty clever way around this. If I were to go ahead and take off the super glue, what I could do is let's say I want to attach these three together. I could attach the first two, leave the other one blank, but then when I'm actually building my train, I can connect this all up together and just make it look like this last one is connected. And I'll show a better example of this in a minute. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble train. We'll see we still have an error. No structure attached to bogey 4. 
so that means we need to put something here. Each bogey will need at least one block attached to work correctly. But now, when we click Assemble Train, everything works. We can see it looks like we have three bogeys attached, even though only the front two are attached, and then we have our fourth one in the back. One other cool little thing you can do while assembling train is what you can right click on the bogies and you get this different wheel type. So there's two different wheel types. There's the big one and the two small ones. You can kind of just swap between those two and select whichever one looks the best for your train. Now, once I go ahead and actually build this train, we'll place a bogey out here, just kind of see how this all works. I will come over here, click assemble, and it will attach the bogies together via these little cords. So you can actually really see it well here. So basically on this pin, it'll attach via two cords, but if the train itself is connected, you won't get any cord connections. It'll just be connected via the blocks. So now that I have my little test train made, I can hold forward to go forward and travel along this little track. Now, when you're actually driving the track, you can go forward or backwards, but when you go backwards, it goes a little bit slower. And when you come to intersection, you just kind of hold left or right, and you'll get that little arrow down there, which will change. So you can travel left down a path, or you could even travel right down a path. Now when building your train, there are a few cool little tricks you can keep in mind. The first we're gonna take a look at is that train doors and these framed glass doors will actually open and close when you've reached the station. So you can see these are the ones that kind of open up to the side. And if I were gonna go ahead and place these correctly, like that, when we actually reach a station, they will open up automatically. The second thing we're gonna take a look at is the steam whistle. So if I go ahead and place a steam whistle on a fluid tank, we don't need power below this. When we reach a station or if we press a button, these will actually activate and start making noise. And then the last thing I'm gonna call attention to is the campfire. So what's cool about the campfire is it'll generate the smoke, but if you actually place a block above it, when you actually go to build your train and it turns into a contraption, the smoke will continue to flow through that contraption. So even if it's completely blocked off, We'll go ahead and glue all of this new stuff together. Once we get our train going, it will function correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this train. We'll see all our stuff is set up. Gonna hop on here. And then as we approach the station, you'll see our doors open automatically. How cool is that? Plus, you can also see that our smoke is going right through those blocks. And then to activate our steam whistles, while they're approaching a station with a schedule, they will make a noise. Or if you hold your sprint button, they will also make a noise. So now that you know how to actually build a train, what you can do is you can take that concept and scale it up a little bit. So what I've done is I went ahead and built our engine. And you can see this actually has four bogies attached. And the way I was able to do this is the middle two are connected to everything and the outer two are just connected to two blocks. I've got a little coal car here. I've got a passenger train where you can step inside here, sit down in seats. I've got a item cart here with a vault. And finally, a fluid car here with all of these tanks. Now, I do have schematics for all these different trains linked down in the description. So if you're interested in using these in your world, go ahead and check that out. Now, when you place down the schematic, it's going to include everything you need to craft a train, including the superglue and the bogies. So if I go ahead, take a schematic table, put our schematic in here, select what we want. So we'll build the engine. It will load up into your schematic. We're gonna go ahead and right click this, get it into place. So I'm just gonna push it back a few blocks, go down to level. What I found works best is to place it on a track that already exists. We're gonna go ahead and print this or use a schematic cannon if you're in survival. And now we have our train. You can see the bogies are there, but it's not a real train yet. It's still just the blocks to get it to function correctly. So to get this to actually work, what we need to do is place a train station one block in front of the front bogey. So you can see our front bogey center is right here. We're gonna go one block ahead of that, place down our train station. And now when I go into here and click create new train, you can see that it will automatically generate what our train is. So you can see it automatically says four bogeys and we're ready to go. If I were to place more cars on here, I'd want to do it at this stage because when I place all those cars on there, it'll basically say how many bogeys are in the car. Then I click assemble train and our train is fully built. We can go ahead and hop up here, hop in the driver's seat, take control and drive our little train. How cool is that? So one cool thing we do with trains is we can actually make them go faster. So we've got two trains here. One has coal in it and one doesn't. Basically, trains will consume coal to go a bit faster. So you can see when I hop in here and hop in the driver's seat, we're gonna go at this max speed. 
and you'll see it'll cap out at the top there. That little bar shows you the speed. It'll slow down a little bit going around curves or up and down slopes, but you'll see that this is more than enough to max it out. Now what you can actually do on a train is you can use your scroll wheel to control that speed. So if I scroll all the way down, it'll travel a bit slower, or if I scroll all the way up, it'll go faster. And so if you wanted to slow down coming into station, you can very easily control that as you're driving. So now if we hop in this other train which has coal in it, and we hop in the driver's seat, as we speed up to max speed, you'll notice it's actually going to go just a little bit faster. So you can see it's actually taking a bit longer to get up to max speed because the acceleration doesn't change too much, but once we hit that max speed, we are really cruising. So taking a look at this practically, I have these two trains hooked up to a lever here. So when I go ahead and flick this, it'll go off with the schedule, and you'll see that our train with coal while the acceleration stays the same, once it goes around this first curve and has more time to accelerate, it really starts to pick up speed and leaves the other train in the dust. So that's definitely something that you should do with your own system, is if you have the ability to easily transfer coal into your cars, go ahead and do that and your trains will run much faster. So now that we know how to build our tracks, build our trains, and make them work, now we're going to take a look at junctions and how to make those function properly. So if I go ahead and activate this, you'll see if trains don't have junctions set up properly, they will actually crash. So you'll see not only did it crash, but our poor little pillagers took a bit of damage. To go ahead and fix this, all you got to do is grab a wrench, click your train, and then click wherever you want it to be moved to. So I can go ahead and click both these trains and move them along the line to where they need to go. So especially if you're building an automatic system, you really want to make sure you have your signal set up correctly. Now you'll see that I did get a notification collision with another train. So it is possible that if your trains crashed, you will know about it and you will be able to go fix them. But we definitely want to avoid that as much as possible. So that's where train signals come in. So when you place a train signal, all you got to do is right click on a track and then place the signal. And what it's going to do is it's automatically going to section off bits. So you'll see that we have this yellow bit and this green bit. This yellow bit is a section and the green bit is a section. So basically, if there's a train in the green bit, the yellow bit train will not go into the green bit. Now this doesn't make too much sense because if there's a train here, we want that to be able to keep moving and we don't want this train to stop this train. So if I were to place another bit here, you'll see now these are yellow, this one's green, and then we would want two more on this end. So now we have five different sections. We've got two yellow sections, a green section, and then two more yellow sections. So as a train comes through here, if there's a train in the green section, it will actually stop. The other thing we can do is we can right click this with a wrench, and if it shows the brass outside, what that means is it won't go through unless it can go all the way through. So what that means is like if we have a train that's like right here, that'll stop this train from traveling all the way through. What it'll do is it'll stop here, so that way trains coming through here still have the possibility to keep going through and won't get stopped by the train sitting here. The other thing we can do is place Nixie tubes on tops that'll show white or red, depending on if the rail is traversable. So if we go back to hold our train signal to see our blocks, we can see that this yellow bit has a train on it, so this is going to turn red. So what this will look like in a practical approach is if I activate these two trains, and we get our guys going here, you'll see it'll turn red, which will stop that train from going through until it's all the way through, and then this train will be allowed to go through, and then once they're both through, they will turn white again. So taking a look at some more use cases, obviously we can keep doing it at crossings. And what we want to do is kind of place them in the direction they're going to get our section off. We can also place these at junctions, and that's pretty important at a junction. So we can go ahead and place one, two, three here. So that way if a train's in the junction, another train won't enter and cause a crash. And we can even do more advanced things. So say we have one of these roundabouts, we definitely want to have this set up. Now we do want to make sure that the arrow is facing the correct direction and you'll see that we'll start to have this function and so now you'll see we have one two three four places that go in and this whole middle section is blue meaning that if there's a train in the roundabout no other trains will enter the roundabout so to see everything obviously you can hold a train signal now if you're curious if two trains interact with each other if you press f3 you'll get these colored lines on the track and each different color is going to be a different track. So you can see all these different tracks have different colors, mean, meaning they're not connected. But tracks that are connected are all going to have the same color in the F3 menu.
So to give you guys kind of the full picture on how to use trains and what a full system looks like, what I've done is I actually took the time to build a full little mock train network and a little factory to give you guys an idea of how the trains are going to work and how it all looks put together. So the first thing to do is take a look at maps. So what I can actually do is if I go ahead and make a map and right click on a station, if we are far enough in, we will actually see it say what platform that is. So you can see now we have a little marker there that says platform four. What I can do is I can come to all the other stations we have. So we've got another one right here. I can click that and then we have our factory station. So I'm going to go ahead and click all of our stations and we can take a look at what this whole area looks like. So now we have all of our different maps created. What we can actually do is go ahead and put them into an item frame. And what we'll see is you can actually see those platforms on the item frame. So I'll take a little bit of time and set up our whole train station on our wall here. So now that I have all those maps placed down, you can actually see our full train network. So basically what I have set up is there's five platforms, one, two, three, four, and then five is actually through another portal. And then we have a milk station, a water station, and then this one is actually not named yet. It still just says track station. So I'm actually going to go over there and rename it to leave station because what we're actually going to be making is builder's tea. So when I go ahead and rename this to Leaf Station, our map that has that station on it, which is somewhere around here, is going to crash my game. Okay. Okay, so after a quick little crash, that's, I guess, one really important thing to note. Um, if you have a map that has a station that's been renamed or moved or removed, do not open that map again because I guess it will crash your game. Um, but now if I go ahead and right click it again, it will say leave station. Um, I'm a little worried about that map that's on the wall. I'm assuming that it's going to stay the same because usually maps, unless updated in that chunk, um, should be safe. But it's actually going to automatically update to leave station. So there we go. We now have all of our different stations all set up on our map. So the next thing I want to do is get all of our train signals set up because right now, the trains will crash. Um, with all the different ways they're going, trains will be crashing into each other unless we take the time to set up train signals. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to our roundabout and set up the signals for that. So you guys already saw me do a roundabout, so I'm just going to go around all four corners, set up all our signals with girders and Nixie tubes, and then we should be good to go. So with that done, we can now see that we have our green section for a roundabout all set up. What I'm actually going to do is grab a wrench because the way this roundabout is going to work is trains are going to be coming from all different directions and want to go in, but I don't want them to go in unless the full thing is fully traversable. Now, the reason we don't want trains to go through unless it's fully traversable is let's say we're blocked up here and there's a train sitting right here and there's a train coming through here that can't get all the way through. Instead of coming through here and blocking the whole roundabout, it'll actually wait on the other side. So then if a train's coming through this way, it has the roundabout, it can go in, go out, and along its merry way without having to wait for that train to have a clear path through. So we're going to set all of these to only go through if it's fully traversable, and that section should be good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at this station. So over here is where we're actually gathering our leaves, and we want to go to the left here, which crosses over a track. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically section it off so that entire bit of track is going to be fully on its own. So the reason I want to make sure that it's fully concealed in, in its own space is because if we have a train coming through here and it's sitting right here and a train's coming this way, it could potentially crash. So as I go through here and set this up, what you'll notice is once it's all set up, even though we have a, both an intersection and a train crossing, it's going to all generate correctly in the same kind of group. So once we have that, we got one more to place. We'll just go right here. And once that's down, we can now see that that whole little intersection is now grouped all on its own. So no trains will enter here unless that whole section is completely cleared. So now with this intersection, what's going on here is we have trains coming into the station and then trains going straight. But what we want is we don't want a train going to the station to block the straight bit. So what I'm actually going to do is place a train signal here and then one at the end. So that'll make it so that trains in the station here won't affect trains that are just trying to traverse through. So if I go ahead and do that, now the way it'll work is trains coming through will just go right on through and trains going to the station will wait in the station.
And with that, I took the time to place down all of our different signals and make sure that all of our sections are sectioned off in a smart, correct way. Now what you want to do is hold down a train signal and just make sure everything is correct. It's like going to this station is its own thing, this whole messy intersection is one thing, this way is one thing, this way is one thing, that all looks really good. Then as I come over here, what I'll notice is, oh, this isn't good. So this whole station is one and it's connected to this intersection, but that's bad because that means if a train is coming through here and wants to go straight, it's actually going to stop there even if a train's all the way over here. So to fix that, I'm just going to place a bit there place down our signal and now the way it's going to work is we can see we have this red section and this yellow section so that means if a train's at the station this train will still be able to go right on by and continue on its way and once it is all going you're pretty much good to start sending out automatic trains and they will all work properly and correctly and travel the route successfully so now that we have our whole train network set up, we're going to actually take the time to build out our first train schedule. And we're going to start with the passenger train. So to start your train schedule, you're just going to right click on one of these schedule items and you'll be greeted with this screen. First step is to add an action, travel to station, and then pick your station. Now you'll get a list of every station in your world, but it is based on proximity. So our closest station is platform four. So I can go ahead and travel to station platform four, click check mark, and now it will travel to that platform. Once we have that little cell created, we have a few different options. By default, it is always going to wait five seconds, which means it'll get to the station, wait five seconds, and then depart. We can go ahead and click on this to edit it to all these different options. So we have schedule delay, time of day, fluid cargo condition, item cargo, redstone link, player seated, cargo inactivity, chunk unloaded, or station powered. Now the important ones for us for a passenger train would be a schedule delay. So let's say we want to get to a station, wait two minutes for people to get on board and then go. We could do time of day, so that way if you want to set up a system where at a certain time of day the station's going to arrive and leave from a station, we can set up that. We can say player seated, so we can say how many players are seated in the seat. We can see if the chunk is unloaded, and we can see if the station is powered if, let's say, we wanted to make the station go with the click of a button. So I think the first thing we definitely want is a scheduled delay of, let's say, 20 seconds, meaning it'll never wait at a station longer for 20 seconds. We could also say ticks or minutes, but I think seconds is the way to go for this. Now, once we have that set up, we have two more options. We can add a condition or an alternative condition. So if we add a condition, we can say station powered. So that means we can power the station, but it's always going to wait 20 seconds. So if I added that, it'll leave after 20 seconds and if the station is powered. So that way it'll never leave until that's done. If we don't want this, we can either click it and click delete, or we could just right click on it to delete a cell. The next thing we're going to do is add an alternative condition. So let's say we wanted to leave after 20 seconds or if a player is seated. In this menu, we can say how many players we want and exactly or above. So we're going to say one or above players are seated or we wait 20 seconds, the train will leave. So that way, as soon as we sit down, the train will leave. Now that that first cell is created, we're going to add a new action. So let's say we're going to travel to station. We're going to go to platform one next, let's say. Click check mark. And then we'd want to set these same things up. So we want to wait 20 seconds. And we want to add a player seated delay of one or above. Now that that's done, what this would do is it would travel from station four to platform one and then back to platform four. Now that this is set up. What I'm going to do is actually add all the other platforms in here. So I'm going to hit duplicate and then we want platform three. And then we also want platform two and platform five. And you can see I'm just typing in here, scrolling down and selecting which one I want. Now the next thing we want to do is make sure this makes sense. So starting at platform four, if we go to platform three, it looks like that would want to be next. Now we can see it's not next. To edit that, all we want to do is click these arrows to move it up or down. So I can move it up, so that way it goes from platform four to platform three. The next, let's say, go over to platform two and then around to platform one, and then we can go into the nether for platform five. So I think we wanted two next, then one, then five, and then back to four. Now the reason it's going back to four is we have this loop forever set up, so that way it'll continue that loop. We can also turn that off so that way it'll go around just once and then come back. But we're gonna go ahead and turn that on, click the check mark, and then add our conductor. So we're gonna go ahead and just grab a bee here with a lead. And if you grab an animal with a lead and right click on a seat, it'll sit down. 
And then once you give it the schedule, it'll wear a little hat and your train will now be following the schedule. So we can see it just departed station four. It's gonna be making its way over onto station three. And once it's there, it's gonna wait 20 seconds or for me to sit down. So I'm gonna run over to station three. We'll wait for our train to come into the station. And what you'll notice is when it gets close, if you have a steam whistle on it, it'll actually whistle when it gets close to the station. So now I'm gonna go ahead and enter the train. We're gonna sit down and we will be taking off. And the other thing you might notice is that the doors are going to automatically open and close when you're on a station. So if we're going into the next station and you watch the doors, they'll actually open once we reach the station. So you can see we're coming into the next station here. We'll hear the whistle and then once it's arrived, the doors will open and up. And because there's a player seated, it'll pretty much get going right away. And then here it is coming on into station two. And then after this, it's going to go to station five, which is actually in the nether. So we're going to go ahead and catch the, the train and we will travel on into the nether with our little bee friend. So you can see this is super cool. Um, you can even get up and walk around if you want. It's a little, a little buggy, especially around corners. Like you can see I'm kind of getting trapped in here and it's impossible to move around. So I'm just going to go ahead and sit down and we will travel on into the nether. So here we go around the roundabout and traveling on this way. And you can see as we're traveling along, these signals are turning red because there's a train in that block. Um, so that means whenever our other trains are going, they will be stopped by this. But here we come around into the nether and you'll actually see a really cool little animation as it goes into the nether. So you'll see like the whole train kind of has this little purple particle effect and you'll actually travel to the nether in the train and stay seated. How freaking cool is that? So we can go in here, travel in the nether, and I'll hop out of the train so we can get a better view of the particle effect. So now that you can see there's no player in there, it's going to stop for 20 seconds and then continue on along the way. So here it goes. It's going to go around this loop and then back out into the overworld. Now, as you can see, we actually did end up stopping. And now the reason for that is because in this block, we have some other train sitting here, which means it's going to block. So to fix that, I'm just going to simply go in here, add in some signals to cut these trains off. So that way it will continue along its way. So the next thing we're going to do is set up our fluid cargo train. So if we go ahead and take a look at our map, our fluid cargo train is going to need to go to three stops. It's going to need to grab milk, grab water, and then come back to our factory. So if I open up our train schedule, our first action is going to be to travel to station factory. So the first thing it's going to do is travel to our factory. And I'm going to actually wait to set up all the different stations before we set up what our conditions are. So the next station is going to be our water station. And then finally, it's going to travel to our milk station. And let's just make sure that makes sense with our track. So it'll basically come around the loop, go get water, go back around the loop, and then go get milk, which I think makes sense. This could be done easier if we could just go to milk and then set up an easy one right to water. But we kind of want to see our signals in action, so we'll just leave it as that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need to actually grab some milk in a bucket and some water in a bucket because we need to set up the conditions for traveling to the next station. So what I'm going to want to do is when we hit the water station, I'm going to turn this into fluid cargo condition. So when dealing with fluids, we want to use fluid cargo condition or cargo inactivity. So cargo inactivity means there's nothing moving in or out for a certain amount of time. And then fluid cargo condition is going to be looking at the amount of fluid in there. So what we're going to say is at the water station, we want more than let's say 50 buckets of water, meaning that we will have five tanks full of water. And then we'll say the same thing at the milk station. So fluid cargo condition, we want to have more than 50 buckets of milk. So now that's set up, it will not leave those stations until it has that. Now, if we happen to run out of water or milk, we're going to add an alternative condition schedule delay of 60 seconds, meaning it'll leave if it hits that, or it'll just leave after a whole minute if it doesn't hit the amount that it needs. So we're going to go ahead and set that to 60 seconds, click check mark, and now our stations are ready. 
except the factory station. So when we hit the factory, there's two things we want to do. We want to set fluid cargo condition of water, and we want to change this to exactly, and we're going to set this to zero buckets. And we're going to add a second condition to set fluid cargo condition of milk to exactly zero buckets. So that means it'll go to the factory until it has zero buckets of water and milk. And I am going to add an alternative condition to have a schedule delay of, let's just say, 120 seconds. So that way, after two minutes, it'll leave if, for whatever reason, it doesn't hit the zero. And then we'll add a second schedule delay of 120 seconds for the milk as well. So now this is ready to go. We can go ahead and spawn in a mob, grab it on a lead. Mm -hmm. Right click it to the seat and then right click it with a schedule and it is now following the schedule and is going to be on its way. So you can see our first stop is going to be the factory. So we're going to go around here, stop the factory, there's nothing to unload. So it's going to reach the station and just kind of sit there for a minute and then continue on to the next station. So now we can see our train has just arrived over at our water station, which is station one. And you can see it actually immediately filled up, meaning that we're pumping out way faster than we need to because that was 50 buckets all at once. Now it's going to kind of go around this little loop back over to our milk station, which I'm guessing is also going to be pretty quick. So we can see our train is going to continue traveling all the way through to here to our milk station going to pump out the milk and then again it's going to pretty much immediately fill up with 50 buckets of milk it's like this one's actually going a little bit slower but once it's full it will travel on back to our station so you can see it's now full of milk it's going to continue on and what you'll actually notice is that the water went into one tank and the milk went into another because if you have multiple tanks on the same train, it'll actually kind of pick the tank that has that same fluid. So you can very easily have a train with multiple different kinds of liquids and it'll all kind of work together really smoothly. You hear the train comes, we'll hear the little whistle as it comes into the station, and it will connect up and start pumping out the milk and water. So it'll pump out into these tanks, which then go into our mixers so we can actually craft up some builder's tea. Now what we'll notice is it didn't stop for very long at the water station, so what we can actually do is right click on the conductor and basically see what it's doing. So we can say, yeah, it is waiting for 50 millibuckets, it was just that quick. So I'm actually just going to double this to 100, because we should be able to absolutely get 100 buckets that quick, give it back to him, try to exit the train, and it should continue on its way. And you can see right here, it's actually going to stop because this other train is in the roundabout. It's going to stop, wait for it to go through. Then once it can, it will continue on its way. How cool is that? So now we have both milk and water being pumped in here. If you look at the recipe for builder's tea, the last thing we're going to need is some leaves, which we have being made on over here. And then to get these leaves, I have a little cargo train set up. So we're going to need one final schedule. So to set up our schedule for our cargo train, all we need to do is travel to station, factory, and travel to station, leaf station. So once we have those set up, then all we got to do is set this up to say we want our item cargo condition to be more than, let's say, 50 leaves. Um, and now what we actually need to do is give it what it's looking for. So we're generating oak leaves over there. So I'm going to do is grab oak leaves and place it in this box. So that way it knows it's looking for oak leaves and actually this is the factory so we want this to say exactly zero and then for our leaf station we want this to be a item cargo condition oak leaves more than well say 100 items and then that's really it there are a few different things we can do here with the conditions um, we could do the cargo inactivity again um, or we could even do chunk powered if there's like a specific time we want this to go. But now all I need to do is just add the alternative conditions where we'll leave after 30 seconds if it's empty of leaves, or it'll leave it for 30 seconds at the factory if we're all filled up on storage. So now what we need to do is grab ourselves a conductor, put them in the seat, give them the schedule, and now the train is going to be on its way. So there goes our cargo train over to the first station. It's going to stop at the factory, try to unload. It's not going to be able to, so it's just going to move right onto the leaf station. So it just finished unloading. It's going to wait for this train to go by. 
once that's fully through out of the station, it's going to start going ahead. Now it's going to wait over here. And you can see that the fluid train got there first, so it's going to get to go first. Even though they're both waiting at the same signal, fluid station is going to go on its way. And then now the cargo train is going to head out. It's going to wait till it can fully go through, and then it will continue on its way. The cargo train is going to go over here, collect its 100 leaves, and then keep on going. So it's going to come into the station, it's going to connect up, get a whole bunch of leaves. Once that's done, it's going to loop back around back to the factory. So now we can see there was actually a small issue with our signaling. So if I go ahead and grab a signal, what we can see is... This train is stopped here because on this blue line is our cargo train. Now what that means is like the cargo train is trying to go through here, at least that's what this train thinks, even though it's actually going to the station. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is go ahead and place another signal here, which will make this its own little section, so that way this train has the space to go into the station and this one can continue on its way. So now our leaf train is going to come into station. We will see it pump out all of the leaves. They will go into storage, over into here, where we will start mixing up our builder's tea if we remember to set up our blaze burners. So there are still a few more important things to know with the train schedules. So alongside all of the different things we have going on, there's two more components to this. The first is to limit the max speed. So let's say we're going from platform floor to platform three, and when we go to platform three to four, we want it at a different speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two max speeds and I'm gonna set one to 80%. And then if I went ahead and put this in between platform four and platform three, it'll move from platform four to three at 80%. And then it'll move from platform three back to platform four at 100%. So if you wanted to limit the speeds at certain spots, we have that control, which I think is amazing. And then the last thing we're gonna take a look at is the action to update a schedule title. So what this will do is it'll actually update what the schedule is called at a certain spot. So if I added this in here, put in between platform four and three, it'll update the schedule title to high. So I hope you guys enjoyed this absolute behemoth of a tutorial. I really wanted to make sure that I covered every single feature that has to do with trains so you guys can build the ultimate train networks. If you do have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I will try to get to as many of them as possible. Plus, I'll also be pinning a lot of comments that have specific questions that I think a lot of people are going to want to know about. So feel free to come back to this video, check up on it if you have a specific question that needs answered. And with that, that's going to be the end of today's video. In the meantime, go create something awesome.